Hi, welcome to this video where I'm going to talk you through the lenses that I use for wildlife photography. In this video I'm going to talk you through the range of lenses that I use for taking wildlife photographs. Now I'm not a professional wildlife photographer and some of these lenses are fairly modest in price, some get a little bit more expensive as they get towards the top end, but I'll talk you through all of that as part of this video. Hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on any of my content. At the moment on this camera body, I've got a 35 millimeter lens, and the only reason it's on here at the moment was for taking the thumbnail at the start of the video. Now this kind of lens isn't very good for taking wildlife photography because one, it doesn't allow you to get the subject very big in the frame without getting very close. And that has the knock-on effect that with a lot of subjects, you wanna stay a good distance away from the um, subject so you don't scare them. So you need something with a lot more reach. Now normally when people start to make the move into using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera that's got an interchangeable lens, they buy what is known as a kit lens. That comes bundled with a camera and usually it's not the best quality. You can still get some decent pictures with it, but you will really notice the difference if you upgrade to something a little bit more high quality. This lens is my workhorse lens. I tend to have it on the camera body most of the time when I'm out and about, and it's not strictly a wildlife lens, but I have used it for taking wildlife photographs. It's a Nikon 24 to 120 gold ring lens, and it's got vibration reduction as well. And you really do notice the difference in sharpness and quality when you put this on the camera. Other benefits of this lens is that it's very light. So it doesn't weigh you down when you're carrying it around for a long while. But also it's f4 all the way through the zoom range, which means that it's very fast at focusing. Now for those people who aren't aware, the way that a camera focuses is it will the camera will open the aperture to its widest possible to get the focus lock and then just as you press the shutter button it will stop down to the selected aperture to take the photograph. My camera body has a full frame sensor which means that the sensor is an equivalent in size to an old 35mm frame of film. A lot of people will choose to go for a crop sensor because what this effectively does is give them more magnification because it crops in tighter they get closer to the subject without spending more on longer glass. Other ways that you could get closer to the subject is to add an extender which is a ring that has a lens in it that sits between the camera body and the lens itself or an extender tube which is literally just a tube that moves the lens further away from the camera body. Just a word of warning, before buying any extension tubes or extenders, just check that they are compatible with your lenses. Extension tubes should work with most lenses. Extenders have a much narrower range of lenses that they will work with. It's all about the communication between the camera body and the lens and how it affects the autofocus. So just to give you an example of what can be achieved, here are some pictures that I've taken with this 24 to 120 mm lens. When extender tubes really come into their own is in macro photography. Now this lens here is a 105mm Nikon lens and it's a macro lens which is pretty good on its own right but by adding an extension tube allows you to focus at a much shorter distance. Now if you are doing this try and get extension tubes that have electrical contacts that allows you to auto focus at the same time you'll find that very useful. So even without extension tubes, this lens will still focus on an object that is just 31 centimeters away from the camera. And so I'm gonna show you some of the things that I've taken with this macro lens.
If you've got any questions about my setup or any of my lenses, don't forget to drop them below in the comments. So the first really serious lens that I bought for wildlife photography was this one. It's a Sigma 120 to 400 millimeter lens. It's the only lens here that's non-Nikon, but it doesn't really make any difference. It's still a really good quality lens and I've had some really great pictures with it. Sigma now have updated this lens um, to a 150 or 600 mil lens, which um, gives a lot more reach. Advantages of this lens is that it's got a vibration reduction system built into it. So when you zoomed into 400 mil, it can really help to get more stable shots. Some of the downsides of this lens is that it's got a variable maximum aperture so that when it's zoomed fully in, then its maximum aperture is 4.5. When you zoom out, that maximum aperture stops down to 5.6, which can slow down the focusing. Clearly a bit of kit like this does weigh a lot more. It's 1.7 kilograms. So if you were to carry it around for a long while, you would start to feel it. So this is where something like a monopod or a tripod really does help with this kind of thing. Now, I don't actually use this lens very much anymore because basically I've got lenses that do better jobs. But over time, I have taken some really good pictures with it and I'll just put some of them up now. We'll move on now to what is my most expensive lens. This is a Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Now, this has got lots and lots of advantages. First of all, it's really, really sharp. It's really high quality, but also it's very, very quick because it's 2.8 all the way through the zoom range. So that makes focusing really, really quick. I'm going to show you some pictures that I took using this while I was in the Farn Islands of puffins in flight. And I really noticed the difference between using this and using the Sigma of the speed that I could actually autofocus onto birds in flight. This I could catch them with. The Sigma, I was really struggling to get a focus lock. Now it is fairly heavy, weighing in at nearly 1.7 kilograms, but it doesn't feel unmanageable. It's quite compact. And so you can handhold it um, and with a monopod or a tripod that takes some of the weight off. I have used it at horse cross country events for taking pictures of horses in motion and it did come to Iceland with me um, and that's why it hasn't got a lens odd at the moment because the lens odd is somewhere on a beach in Iceland. So just to show you how good this lens can be I'll put some of the pictures that I've taken with it on the screen now. And so finally, we come to my longest lens, which is this one. Now this is a Nikon 200 millimeters to 500 millimeters lens. Anybody who's watched my recent videos will have seen that I use this lens a lot when I'm taking pictures of garden birds, basically because of the reach that it's got. Um, I can get from 200 millimeters to 500 millimeters, which brings the birds really close and makes them quite large in the frame. When zoomed right out to 500 millimeters, the vibration reduction in this lens really, really starts to pay off because it makes a huge difference. You can see when you activate it that the image just suddenly becomes so much more stable within the frame. Now this lens does also have a neoprene camouflage jacket around it. Now, partly that is to camouflage it and make it stand out less 
What it also does is it adds an extra layer of protection to the lens. Because it's soft neoprene, it will just provide a little bit more shock absorption if you accidentally bang it. But obviously, try not to do that with your expensive lenses. This lens is a monster. It weighs in at nearly two and a half kilograms. And so it's not the kind of lens that you want to carry around for any long periods of time if you're hand holding. So it's much better if you're sat in a hide using a tripod or a beanbag. You will have seen me using beanbags in other videos, but basically what it does is it allows the camera to sit very, very still and very, very stably but you can very quickly move it, and change its position to all kinds of different angles very, very simply. So here are a few of my favorite shots that I've taken with this lens. That's been a bit of a shorter video than normal, but I hope you found that insight into my camera lens is still useful and interesting. If you have, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell notifications. That's all for now. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Is get stay. Uh, uh, why? Because what is my probably? Because of its weighing in at 